think about food as being not just those macronutrients, the protein, the carbohydrates, the fats. Think of them as intelligence, as information that influences your physiology. And what we're, so, so food has that energy and uh, you know, protein building is, uh, value to it, but it also has this ability to give your physiology signals, move, its, move the physiology's functioning in a better direction. And that's really what happens with gene expression, is that you're altering things so that, and those gene expression effects, the effects on the way that our genes are being expressed can happen in seconds or, and, and then go away in the next few seconds. If you eat that Cinnabon, <laughs> there are enzymes, there are genes in your liver that will be turned on immediately. You will produce enzymes that will allow you to deal with that Cinnabon, okay? For better or for worse. No. And it will have to do with accumulation of um, glycogen and fat and all that sort of stuff. But so it's not just affecting you at that moment, though. Right, right. You're creating a, f a future path, yeah? Right. Be that's the point that comes next, is that when you are eating a certain kind of diet, uh, it affects your functioning, your gene functioning longer term. Has anybody heard the, word, the term epigenetics? Epigenetics. What happens with epigenetics is that when you, when there's a certain impact on your physiology, the effect of that can actually change the way that your genes are chemically functioning. It doesn't change the sequence of the genetic alphabet, but it changes the actual ability of that DNA to be turned on or expressed or not. And this effect can be long term. In fact, these effects can be inherited so that if there's an epigenetic change that occurs as a result of your diet, that can influence your son or your daughter's diet. And when they continue, it can go on to their children. So these effects can be long term. And uh, of course, they sort of uh, you might, if you don't continue the, um, what would you say, the, in the, the stimulus that's giving rise to it, then it falls off in a few generations. But this is something that strongly affects the physiology long term. And there's now evidence that this occurs with the pesticides that you eat. Anybody heard of atrazine? Atrazine is one of the most commonly used herbicides. It's used in corn. It's used in many crops. There's now research that's been done showing that the effects of atrazine on, this was done in, in mice, if you feed a mouse atrazine in their diet, and then you look at, you will see changes in, in their genome, okay? You look at the, and, and behavioral changes. You look at the next generation, those will be there. And you look at the third generation and they'll be there. So this happens both from the good things in our diet and from the bad things. Well, this is this is a little heavy, and and you know, Sorry. so no, no, but it's it's important because we're looking at pat, our our history of our own choices in life, our families, and and looking back perhaps. But what's really great about food as medicine is that the choice to change that trajectory can happen as soon as the next meal, right? So that's a beautiful thing, and so that's what what you really focus on, right? How and you as well, like how to flip from and avoid some of the toxins, both in the food, on the food, or in the environment generally, and, and or how to counteract that by limiting those toxins and choosing, choosing food for health.